Welcome to Tech Primers. In this video, we are going to see the Spring Cloud Sleuth implementation with an example. So in the previous video, you would have seen the um, what is Spring Cloud and how Spring Cloud uses Spring Cloud Sleuth for distributed trace logging. Okay, in this video, we are going to see Spring Cloud Sleuth implementation. So uh, what I have done is I have created two uh, apps. One is called the Spring Cloud, um, the Sleuth client. The other is called the server. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the server from the client. So if you see here, uh, this is the start.spring.io. So I have added web and sleuth as the dependencies uh, for the project. So I have created two projects already. So you can click the generate option to create it with all the necessary details uh, filled in here. So I have already opened that in IntelliJ. So what I'm going to do is, um, so for example, this is the client, right? So in the client, uh, we are going to have the rest controller. So let me go ahead and create it. So I'll create a package called resource. So I'm going to create a file called uh, hello resource. And I'm going to use the Spring MVC4. So I'm going to annotate it with REST controller. Also, I'm going to say what is the REST URL for it. So let's name that as REST slash hello. Okay. And here uh, we need to have a method. So I'm saying get mapping and I'm going to say the value as empty okay so I'm going to I'm, I have just created a rest endpoint here so what we need to do here is we need to create a rest client uh, because this is the sleuth client and we need to call the rest server so for that we need to create a rest template so in order for spring sleuth to automatically inject the trace ids across the um, application so we need to inject that as a bean so i need to create a config package or i can even create that in the application but let's uh, follow some convention here so what i have done is rest template config so i just created a config file and annotate it with configuration. So this will this is nothing but the Java annotation, Java uh, representation of the XML file. So I'm going to create the bean for the REST template. So I'm just going to do a new REST template. So if you do that, so there will be only one instance of the REST template, and that will be used by Spring Cloud Sleuth to add the trace ID and the span IDs. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to auto wire that because our bean is already created. Okay. So using the rest template now we should be able to do a call get for object. So what I'm going to do is get for object and I'm going to say HTTP localhost so the port number can be 8081 slash res slash hello slash server okay and we can say this as client just for our naming convention okay and this is going to return a spring string string class okay and i'm going to say let's add some logging here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add a log statement saying before calling the server let's use some uh, spring sl4j for logging private static final logger
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use logger factory dot get logger hello resource dot class. Okay, so and use that instead of the system router printer line. Okay, now we need to get the object response back here. Okay, so string is string is the response, so I am just going to use a string here directly. So what this particular uh, REST controller is doing is we are just calling the server side with this particular URL with the port 8081 REST hello server and that is going to return a string and we are just going to return that back to the UI okay now let's go to the server project so this is the server project which is also a new project which is having nothing so here what we need to do is we need to expose that particular rest endpoint so same way I need to create a resource package I'll just create the similar class hello resource so there is no necessity to create the same class but just for the demo purpose I'm just creating a dummy hello world controller okay so I'm just going to use rest slash hello and here we need to have the get mapping and here we are going to mention that it is the server so here what we are going to do is we need to return hello world okay just for the logging purpose we can add a init static so I have added a logging as well here so so that we can see how the logs are getting mapped so I have added a reach to server here so the only thing we need to modify here is the application property so we have added the port number as 8081 so we need to say server dot port equal to 8081 Okay, so we need, we have we are changing the Spring uh, Boot server port to be 8081. So let me start this particular application. So it should start in the 8081. So this is the server side. Meanwhile, we can go to the client side and start the client as well. So this is the client. So I'll start the client as well. The server, the client should start in 8080, and the server should start in the 8081. Meanwhile, we can go to the web browser to hit the URL. So I need the 8080. So we are going to hit the client. So client is running on 8080 and we are going to say hello, rest hello client. Okay, let's see if the servers are up. So this is the client. Let's go to the server. server is up so what does the server say address already in use so the server address is already in use 8080 so the client has started in 8080 so why didn't this property work so let me create an application yaml Okay, let me restart this so this should start in the port 8081 let's see meanwhile if I hit this particular URL it is going to give me the exception
yeah so internal server error 4040 so the destination url is not present so if you see here once i hit the rest endpoint the log says if you see here we have added a log right if you go to the resource in the client we have added a log for before calling so if you see here before calling there is a trace id added here so this is the trace id which is added by the spring cloud slow so let's clean this up clear these logs um so the server side is still not able to pick up the server port i'm not sure why address already in use so is 8081 already being used let me try 8083 hopefully this should be free i'm not sure let's see if it is free then we are lucky it's making this way as well okay we are lucky so the um, port 8083 is free the only thing is in the client we have to now change it to 8083 so let me change it to 8083 and restart the app meanwhile we can clear the server logs so that we can have a clear view of the logs with the trace id so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to hit the client the client is going to speak with the server and imagine this is one microservice and this is another microservice so we are going to see the log traceability across these two different processes okay that is what spring cloud sleuth is good at so i have cleaned up both the logs client and the server so let me hit the client url so the client url is going to fetch the hello world from the server side so we have got the result back here so if you see here this is the client so in the client we have added uh, the spring cloud sleuth has added a logging here so if you see here this is the trace id so we have two logs before calling and after calling the server which we have added here so let's go to the server side so if you go to the server side the same log has been added to the trace so if let's say i want to show it parallelly i'll just minimize this window so that i can show both the options parallelly both the logs parallelly if you see here this is the left side one is the server side the server side has the same trace id as the client side okay so this is automatically done by spring cloud sleuth so let's hit again this particular url so you should see the new request with new trace id if you see the next request has c755 the same trace id is present here the next one which is displayed is the span id so that is specific to the instance So if you see here in the server side the span id is completely different and in the client side the span id is completely different okay so span id is used for tracking within the microservice and the trace id is used for tracking across the microservice okay so that is how the spring cloud uh, sleuth works so how does uh, spring cloud sleuth does it right so if you remember we have added the rest template config here right so what we did is instead of creating a new instance or new rest template every time in the resource or wherever we call it from instead we auto void it using the bean so when we created this instance spring cloud sleuth automatically injects this particular rest template with the required headers which it needs for transferring the data across microservice so that is how spring cloud uh, sleuth is uh, helping us in adding the trace id across microservice okay so that's it for this particular video so if you want to um, have a demo of this particular project so i have uploaded the code base into github so you can use the same project so i will be uploading now uh, these two projects to github so you can download them and try it out locally in your system as well uh, that's it for this particular video meet you again in the next video thank you